Hey y'all. I know I don't talk much in these videos, but um we're gonna get this thing started. So this is Bella. Alright, and I got my nail tips here. So I'm gonna just walk you through the whole process. So I got my sanding band here. I'm gonna put it into my Koopa trail. I'm gonna turn it on the lowest speed. You see how low that's going? Put these over here. So I already got some pre-made tips. So this is what you'll do for a regular client is etch the surface of the nail to prep after you've prepped all the cuticles and all the other kind of stuff. So I did not glue these tips down because I kind of like this hand and I want to use it for practice because of course I don't, you know, talk during the videos, but I am an armed service member. And just for like the sake of the video, I'm only doing these four fingers and not the thumb. So after you etch the nail and properly do the cuticles, you'll get your tips. Um, you got your glue, I use KDS glue. So, we're gonna measure out the tips. So when you measure out your tips, you wanna make sure you go from side wall to side wall, this is side wall to side wall. So I'm gonna put a dab of glue, a dab of ranch. <laughs> Don't mind me y'all, I'm just bored today. So I'm gonna show y'all what I got. So you're gonna measure from side wall to side wall and place the tip down and you'll hold it for a few seconds. See how that goes from side wall to side wall. So you'll get your other tip. And this is already going to hand, by the way. So you can get your other tip. And you'll size it from side wall to side wall. And then put your glue down. And then you can put your tip down. You can do it either way. Um, I kind of mix it up sometimes. Just depending on how I feel. other size they're pretty sturdy in this hand so I really wouldn't really worry too much about that so side wall to side wall and place your tip down kind of place it down like I'll show you again on the last finger go down the size so that's perfect put your glue down you only need like one dot of glue so when you actually go to um, put your tips on I kind of start at the bottom of the tip and work my way up to squeeze the glue up a little bit like that the tip is on there and I'm just gonna make sure it's not sticking to the hand because I don't want it to stick to the hand. There you have all your tips on pretty much. So your next step is going to be to cut the tips. I use these scissors. I think I got these from Amazon and I'm just gonna cut off the numbers because I want long. So cutting at the beginning of the numbers so they'll be long because I love long nails. I don't know what it is about me and long nails. So there we have them. So also what I do on the client is I go ahead and cut the sides off for a coffin shape. I just cut like this. See, 
I'm only cutting a little bit and I'm just gonna file the rest so when you're cutting just make sure you have your hand your finger here is a guide so you don't like actually cut the person because these scissors are super freaking sharp like sharp sharp So when you do like cut for um, a coffin shape, I usually try to angle it like like gauge where I want the coffin to be. So so like that, pretty much. So you have them all cut so you can put your glue up so it don't dry and you can put your scissors up too. Alright, so I have an already seasoned 8080 grit file. It's always best to use a new file on every client and then if you have a new file, you'll do like one of these numbers to champ it like this because these edges are like really super sharp. But this has already been used this is just for demonstration purposes so when you file you want to keep your file as straight as possible here there and then I take the file and I go like that here it's not straight enough for me so I'm gonna go back in So that to me is pretty perfect. So I'm gonna do the same thing to all of the nails. All right, so this is that ready go on a hand that's posable so I can move the fingers anywhere I want. So when you're filing, you just wanna make sure that you have like the support on the nail. So when you're filing this way, make sure you have your finger here. And then when you're filing the other way, put your thumb there just to guide you a little bit. And then go straight up and down. That way you get that super sharp coffin look. So that's that one. Yeah, that one. So the trick for me to get like that super sleek coffin look is to just ensure that my file is straight because when you angle it then it's gonna start curving the nail so yeah so I'm gonna move this little finger up some more right. so the finger the other fingertip is like in here and this is how I, I do it just for like practice purposes. And then you know, go straight up and down like this. So the last finger here. You won't do this on a real client, so when you have like a real client, you want to hold their hand steady like this. This is just the way I do it. And then some other people, they kind of hold it like this. I don't hold it like that. It's just not comfortable for me, even though that's what I was, how I was taught. But you have to do what works for you. So if holding it like this is comfortable for you, then go ahead and do that. Go like that. So once you're done, you know, shaping for your client, what you want to do is turn their hand around like this because this view here is what they see so when you have your clients turn their hand you turn it like this because this is what they see and you can see any imperfections that you may have like this one right here it's not straight enough so you can go and refine what you need to refine and make it really sleek and then you'll turn your file this way. Or you could just go like that. One or the other. 
whatever is comfortable for you. So this one's pretty perfect. So I'm gonna go on to this pinky here and refine this one. And then I usually go like that. So you see how all of them are even, they're straight, and this, that, and the other. This is my first voice over y'all, so y'all gonna have to like, <laughs> excuse me, cause I don't like to talk. As you can already tell, if you've been watching my videos, I just do the work. So after you've done that step, you'll take your drill on a low speed still and blend in the tips. So for video purposes, I'm gonna hold it at the cuticle so it's not moving nowhere. I'm going right in there and blending in that side tip and this tip right here. So if you're a perfectionist like I am, you'll go ahead and go over the nail and etch the rest of it. It's an extra step. It's not really needed, but I like to do it just to make sure that everything gets adhered. So I'm not gonna do any like real design work today. I will make more videos and do like design work, step by steps and all that. And it's coming in the future for right now. Just I'm getting my foot in the door, trying to make this YouTube thing happen. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So all of the fingers are shaped, etched, and all the other kind of stuff. So after that, I take a prep spray to clean off the nails and I just spray it like so. Oop, she came off. And this is what I would do on a regular person. Let me go ahead and stick that back in that hole like that. Okay. So yeah, there's that. So that part is done. So then what you wanna do is you wanna move everything else out of your way. And then you will, I used um, Bond-Aid to dehydrate the nail. So if you have a client that's like super oily or whatever, I suggest like going over the cuticle and the nail like this. And this is just to do the extra dehydration. So in a, sen in a sense, I'm actually dehydrating twice. So we're gonna pretend like that's, you know, dehydrating and priming. Like, just pretend I just primed. Cause I'm not gonna use my primer on this, it's retarded. So I kind of made this color and it's a, uh, I forgot what I put in here. I don't know what I put in there, but whatever. So the nails are already primed. And then I have my shop towels. These are these blue towels right here. I usually tear it in half because you don't really need the whole thing unless you're doing like color acrylic. So here's this right here. So I have that and then I have my dapping dish here. And I'm gonna just put maybe half of the container in here and then I have my CJP big boy brush yeah I've had it for a while it's got like acrylic on it that I need to get off so to maintain the moist the life of my brush I use an oil and I swish it through the bristles I swish it through like the bristles you see how it's hard right here so I put the oil on there and then I use like a regular clear coat and I put it on there so I use this one Sally Henson's hard as nail extreme where it doesn't matter which one you use that's just the first one I saw so and then I put the cap back on it and that preserves the life of your brush so to remove it you just put it in some acetone 
swish it around. Like this cup here, I forgot where I got it from. If I find out where I got it from, I'll link it down below. So it has acetone down at the bottom and then it gets all of that stuff and then you'll just wipe off on the paper like that. you just go ahead and check your brush make sure there's nothing left over in it because if you have like leftover acrylic left in it that's gonna hurt you in the long run so anyway so when I actually do someone's nails I start with the pinky I don't know why I just do so you want to submerge your brush in the water I mean the monomer why did I say water I must be thirsty <laughs> And then once you submerge your brush, this is just for this brush, you're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna do it with your brush that you own and figure out like your liquid to powder ratio. So on this, I submerge it in there, get the bristles really wet, get them real moist, <laughs> get them real moist, girl. And then I swipe off half of the brush to remove the liquid. And I work in a three ball method. So I just pop, pop it in there like that. I wait a couple of seconds. And then I place the speed and kind of walk it down. So with this, you can take it and move it upward. Swipe off the sides. That way you can maintain the shape of the, the nail that you built. So less is better. Swipe it off and then dip your brush, tap, and swipe down. And wipe down the sides. And wipe down the other side. Swipe down, swipe down, swipe down. If there's leftover, you just tap it off like that. So you see how I'm maintaining the shape of the nails? I really like this color I need to find out if I can if you know who actually has this color in stock and I don't have to bake it please let me know in the comments below because I do not want to make this again it took me so many tries to make this acrylic so that's my few seconds of waiting so pop that bead right there wipe off your brush move it into place and this is also going to help you build up your apex if you have trouble building an apex the three ball method is definitely for you if you want to do that so i'm definitely talking as i'm going so if i get a like a little slight pause that's called concentration <laughs> See how I'm still maintaining the shape of the nails while I'm doing that. So again, you want to submerge your brush, wipe off half the liquid. Now with this last bead, you want to have like a smaller bead. Tap off some. Place it right below the cuticle. Leave it. And then you're going to move it in place. But as you're moving it in place, you're going to move it up to fill in that space and then start swiping on the side and then swipe it on the other side and then tap it in the middle swipe it in the middle and if you feel like that wasn't enough or it wasn't a large enough bead for you to see your apex there's nothing wrong with getting another bead and putting it where the strength needs to be so the apex needs to be like right here so I'm gonna put this bead right here and then I'm gonna pat it into place pat it into place like your cuticle should be flush period because I don't know why I be seeing like these people they got these big humpy cuticles no sis that's not it it's not it So this nail pretty much has like the perfect strength that it needs. And you see, like you have like your slight apex built. Like you don't need like the super huge hump. You just need the strength in the middle of the nail. So it's not all extra flat. And there you have one nail complete. 
completed. Yes. And if you get like acrylic right here or right over here, you'll take your brush and just swipe around the sides like that. I didn't, but just for like show purposes. So that's one, that's the first nail. So I'm gonna take this other nail and do it all over again. So I'm gonna submerge my brush. Push it down for a couple seconds. Some people like to swipe and all that. And here's another technique you can do. You can just like turn your brush sideways so essentially the acrylic is working for you. The only thing that you're do, doing is moving it into place. Moving it and shaping it into place. And when you do this on the sides, it's kind of moving it downward for you. So gravity is your friend. Let's say it together. Gravity is my friend. Gravity is my friend. And if it's sticking to your brush, that means that you need to get some more moisture on your brush. So you see that extra comes off at the end. And then just tap it. Like so. So Let's see y'all, what y'all wanna talk about? Like I, okay, so my first name is Sean, that's first and foremost. And y'all are a part of Neon Nation at this point. Where did I, so I came with Neon Nails because it's a funny story. Riff Raff is one of my favorite rappers. He's a Texas rapper, white dude, he cute too. So he's one of my favorite rappers and he um, had this song tiptoeing in my Jordans. And that song was just like my shit because I usually, I used to collect Jordans, right? Oh, so side note, when you have too many dents in your acrylic, you just want to shake your container a little bit and level it back out. But yeah, anyway, so I've always liked his music. So, and he has, several different names other than Riff Raff. He has Jody High Roller. Don't know where that came from. And he also had the Neon Icon. I was just like, yeah. That's dope. That's like really my personality because I'm uh, I, I would say I'm charismatic and outgoing. Some would disagree. But I don't care if they disagree because you ain't paying my bills. Just put a name on it. I'm really I'm not even confrontational anymore like that part of me is like dead I just I'm just trying to get these coins you know what I mean get these coins together so yeah that's where the name neon nails came from my favorite one of my favorite rappers Riff Raff he's not really like mainstream anymore but he still be doing his thing on the side you know go ahead boo, do your thing do your thing yeah if you get the acrylic like on this side just swipe that motherfucker off oh I can't say that on YouTube can I oh well I think I'm blocking it out so one tip aside of the conversation that I'm having one tip that I will say is the more perfect you make your beads and you make your application the less filing you have to do Cause like in this case, the only thing I need to do is like file on the sidewalls and then buff the surface, like for real. And that's the way I like to do it. I'm not on the phone with anybody, I'm on a video. I'm doing a video. That's my son and he's on my nerves cause he's always in my phone. son is 13 and he thinks 
like he is like the man. I've been looking at him like, boys, sit your ass down somewhere, cause little do you know. Mm -mm. So I have a 13 year old son and a 15 year old daughter and they are like night and motherfucking day. She's like real conservative, real to herself, real careful about who she chooses to associate herself with. Like, if you don't talk to her, she's not going to talk to you. And that's on period. But my son, he will talk to anybody. He is like a ladies man. He's like Deuce Bigelo. <laughs> it's so funny watching kids as they grow up. And it's just like, well, you don't know nothing. But you think you know everything. Everything in the world. I guess that's how we all were once upon a time. But yeah, I grew up in Hampton, Virginia. I'm not gonna tell y'all how old I am because y'all wouldn't believe me even if I told y'all. If you actually saw what I look like, you'll see me one day. I might pop, pop out. I might pop out. I'm more of a behind the scenes type of, type of person. I like to be behind the scenes. I don't even need all the recognition. But as long as I'm here helping y'all, I'm all good. Because there's a lot of people out here that are struggling to do nails. Even myself, I struggle to do nails. I still struggle to this day to do nails sometimes. Because, you know, you got those off days where you're just not feeling yourself. Feeling like yourself. Snickers don't always work. <laughs> not yourself when you're hungry. So with this coronavirus, it, it's crazy because like my kids are like literally out of school and they're doing work from the computer. That is crazy to me. Like who is feeding these kids? Like <laughs> they eating up all my food. They eating up all the food, all the snacks, all of the breakfast. So if y'all have any like questions or whatever, y'all can definitely leave them in the comments below and I will answer them because I actually do nails part time if you want to say that because I do have like a full time job. Like I said, I'm in the military and we're supposed to be working telephonically, but nobody's really doing anything right at the moment. We had a case on our base of somebody that tested positive for us so they're trying to be real cautious with us <sighs> you know so it's a good thing I have this to do so that nail is done so when you have like a real client you want to make sure that you have like control of their finger to I never understood, like, back in the day when I used to get my nails done, they'd be like, relax your hand. I'm like, what do you mean? I am relaxed. Now I know because, like, some people, they've been abused and damaged by, you know, nail techs and cut and just, like, all kinds of stuff. And I get it. That's why I always give my clients or, you know, new customers the benefit to know that, I don't reuse sanding bands. I don't reuse files. Like I have a whole drawer full of files, like a whole stash. And if you're in a nail game, you definitely want to invest in lots of files and lots of sanding bands because that is the worst thing that you want to do, especially if you're working from home like I do. I do work from home, I got a home salon. It's a whole like little cute setup, you know, real cute real cute or whatever cute setup and the, the last thing you want to do is your client to say that they got a disease or a fungus or whatever I don't even like for them to get greenies 
greenies come from like moisture getting trapped up under the nail from lifting. So I do my best to ensure that nobody is having any of those type of issues, period. Because I live in a small area and right now uh, I'm real humble about it, but I legit am the best tech out here. There's like nobody that, like not even the salons. The salons be mad at me when I come in there and I'm like, I don't even understand why. Like, why do you guys even bother? No, I'm playing. Like, I, I had no idea like the salons even knew who I was or anything, I guess, because when you go in there for a pedicure and they see like this extravagant design that they know they didn't do, they're like, oh shit, we got some competition. Oh shit, son. We got some competition. But I don't be trying to compete with nobody. I just be trying to... Actually, I, I be uplifting people. Like, one of the people that asked me was I teaching classes. That actually inspired me to start this channel. Because I know it's like a lot of people. And, you know, everybody doesn't have the money to pay for, like, a class or whatever. So, might as well give the tips and tricks for free. Because... It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. It's all on YouTube. I, I'm actually self-taught, but I am licensed. And I learned a good bit of my knowledge on YouTube. And um, being in, like, Facebook nail groups and following people on Instagram. Even though, like, a lot of people are selfish I feel like this is just my personal opinion. Don't attack me. Don't attack me. But I feel like a lot of people are selfish with their information and I understand why they are because going to school for nails or going to school for any profession, it takes money and it takes time and it takes skill to get it down packed to where you're good at it and you can actually, you know, make a living or profit off of it or however you want to do for it if you're just doing it for fun I don't think I would go to school if I was doing it just for fun I would definitely want to make this a profession so like I said I only do this part-time like I go to work and then I come home and I take clients because this is my peace of mind what do you want why are you in here there's all kind of other mirrors in this house please please Bobby please Please, okay, please. Please, Papi. Damn. My son, he's a mama's boy. He he don't even want to admit it, but he's definitely a mama's boy. He'd love to fucking be around me. Oh damn. I don't even think I can say that. I can't say that. Mm -mm. Let's not curse. No more cursing on YouTube. <laughs> okay. So these are all done. I think I messed that one up a little bit. I bumped it, maybe. So this is like the end result. And then after you're done with your application, you wanna go ahead and close everything up. So I, I kinda leave my brush in here for like 10 minutes before I like use it again. So I close everything up. You wanna close your powder. You wanna close literally everything up so it doesn't get any dust particles in it. So close up your little monomer jar. So one thing about the monomer that I will say is if you didn't work with any colors or you didn't like get anything in it, you can reuse the liquid that you can reuse this until it gets like cloudy. And I can always look at it and tell if it's cloudy. If it's cloudy, don't even use it because that's that's another thing that can cause breakage. So the main things that cause breakage are your prep. Your prep can cause breakage because you didn't, you know, get all of the cuticle off of the um, the natural nail. Or B, you have acrylic on like the cuticles and like the sidewalls and stuff. That's another thing that can cause breakage. So yeah, I mean, it's a it's a large variety of things. Like it also depends on the person's lifestyle as to the breakage. You know, I'm gonna turn this hand this way because it's gonna be easier for me to do that. So I'm gonna put this one right here. So when you're filing, once you've laid the acrylic, 
you can either turn the person's hand towards you or you can leave it how it was. I personally like to do it like this because I can see where it needs to be shaped and not a whole lot needs to be shaped. So like I said before, the more perfect you lay your acrylic down, the better off it's gonna be and you have the less time it takes for you to shape the nails. This hand is like super realistic, uh, like what if it just gets up and starts <laughs> walking around like like this like it <laughs> from the Adams family. So like you see right here how it's like even on both sides. That's what you want for like coffin. The, these are my coffins. So that's that. So you have like this little uneven spot right here. You can go, you can either go here with your file like this, pull the person's skin back and get that piece right there like that. Or you can use your drill for it if you feel comfortable enough to do it. As if you feel comfortable enough to do it. Don't do it if you don't feel comfortable, you know? No means no. No means no. So you see how I have my person's hand right here and then I have the file straight this way. That's what gets that sharp, crispy, you know, crispy, crispy shape. See? And if it's not crispy enough for you, you can always go, you know, over it with your file. Like me, for this hand, the only thing I'm gonna do is go, ooh, that's not straight. That's not straight, baby. I'm definitely a perfectionist when it comes to this because I need for y'all to know that I came through, you know, came through dripping. Okay, so these three are pretty straight and good to go. This is like the perfect coffin set. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. That's my last one. So this should actually be your last and final step before you start to refine the shape on the surface. Cause you see how it's got a little, I bumped it right there. So if you bump it, it's fine. You can always get that with your drill. So that's this part. So here is after I've shaped. So I'm gonna turn this hand back around. And then I'm going to file it. File it, file it, file it, file it, file it. After I dust it, dust it, dust it, dust it, dust it. Y'all, this coronavirus, this shit got me blowed. So I'm gonna take this medium sanding band right here well medium file what am i saying medium drill bit that's what it is a medium drill bit and i'm gonna turn it to the speed that i feel comfortable to work with because it, it don't have to be high see these fingers so when you're working with these red iguana fingers make sure that either a you you um glue it down or a hold it down the only thing you're doing is going over the surface of the nail, like so. And I'm gonna go down the side, like so. And then, so when you do the three ball method, you're gonna have it and it's gonna look like that. So what I do is I hold the person's nail and I just tip it kind of upwards and create the C curve. You know what I'm saying? That C curve. So the C curve actually allows it to have a little bit more strength because I'll actually give you a demonstration in a minute actually on that. Let me hold this right so y'all can see this. So it was kind of uneven right there, so I just did that little number to make it even. So 
there a zit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this C curve on up in there. So if you feel like it's like not even, you can take your file and go like that along the sides. up like so so I feel like it's a little uneven right here on the side so I'm going to take that and file it like that and it you're not putting any pressure on it you just um just letting the file work for you for real Letting that drill work for you. So I'm holding it right here. You don't have to do this with a real person, but I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. But you will hold a person's hand. And I'm just going over the surface, smoothing that out because, I mean, I didn't pretty much lay this acrylic to the gods. You know? Then lay it to the gods. And make sure you get around the cuticle and seal it. Make sure you get around that cuticle and seal it and seal it because if you don't it's gonna break so that's that i'm gonna have to glue these in next time y'all indeed so i'm gonna take this this is another way you can hold the person's hand going over the surface because you've already laid it to the gods. I'm sure y'all out there laying it to the gods. Or at least after this video, you'll be laying it to the gods. And then get that C curve in here. Also, with getting a C curve, you're making sure that there's no acrylic underneath. And you'll take the person's finger and make sure that there's no acrylic underneath. If there is, just take your file, I mean your drill, and then just go under it like that. See right here where there was a little acrylic and it was uneven mm -mm, we don't want that boo we do not need that all right so you wipe off the person's inside of their hand and you wipe off the dust on the outside of their hand like that let me cut this drill off so for demonstration purposes again this is my old young nails buffer so you're going to take the person's hand and buff over the surface mm, belly you losing it and buff over the surface of the nail. You see that? Ooh. Look at her. Yes. She's a bad man, my Gemma. Just as fine as she can be. Hey. So Bella is going to be real Bella ish. Bella ish. Yes. So you're going to take it and then you're going to buff along the sides. Because there's a lot of times where you file and it has that, that like, like this right here. So you're actually just going to file that away. Holding the nail in place. I hope this is helping y'all. Cause it's, it's super difficult to work on this hand and the, the tips ain't glued on. Cause here was the other ones that I did. I didn't glue these ones on either, but you know, you get the idea. So after you have buffed the, all the little scratches out that you created, dust it off. I usually dust it off like this. And I take my prep spray again and then I clean all the dust that's in there. So all of the nails are filed and buffed and such. This is the that result. And yes, they aren't even. I didn't really even pay it no mind because this is just for demonstration purposes. This is the Shine E top coat. Yes, sixth anniversary. Max, come holla at me. I will promote, promote, promote for you. So you're gonna take a little bit of it and then you're gonna
place it here like you would a bead of acrylic. Work it up in a cuticle, swipe down. See, ooh, yes. Uh, so you're gonna do the same step. Take it, let it fan out, put it up, swipe down, swipe down, swipe on the side, swipe on the side. Yep, she get in there. Let it fan up, push it up, and swipe down, swipe down. And that gives you coverage over the entire nail, girl. Entire. So take it, let it fan out, push it up. If you feel like you got too much, wipe it off, swipe down, and swipe down. Before the hand is cured, so I'm gonna take my bell lamp. We're gonna put it on for 60 seconds and throw that ass in a circle. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, y'all. <laughs> so you let it cure for 60 seconds or whatever the time is for your top coat. Sometimes it's 30 seconds, sometimes it's 120 seconds. If it's 120 seconds, girl, get rid of it, get rid of it. long so here's my used sanding band I take that off of the Dremel and I throw that throw that thing out throw that thing right on out you know what I'm saying my friends is how you do the bomb coffin nails the absolute bomb